understand the characteristics of mixture designs, let's take the example of the optimization of a cookie recipe. After some tests, the perfect cookie is made with 1 cup of butter, 2 thirds cup of sugar, and 2 cups of flour, baked at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. However, let's imagine we would like to bake twice the number of cookies. Thus, we need to double the recipe. This way, we are going to use 2 cups of butter, 1.5 cups of sugar, and 4 cups of flour, and bake at 360 degrees for 40 minutes. Will it work? Of course not. We cannot double the baking time and temperature. We are going to burn the cookies. This example seems almost silly. Everyone knows that we can double the ingredients, but we cannot double the baking time and temperature. But the aim here is to rationalize why they behave differently. In this example, we have two kinds of factors. The time and temperature, they are absolute values, meaning that baking at 180 degrees means always the same independently of the number of cookies being baked. On the other hand, if someone tells me that the best amount of butter is one cup, the information does not mean anything without the amounts of the remaining ingredients. In this case, what matters is not the absolute amount, but the proportion among the ingredients. The study and the optimization of absolute variables can be made through the use of factorial designs, as you already know if you have taken my courses on design and analysis of experiments and design of experiments for optimization. However, for the study of mixture variables, when what matters is the proportion among the components of a mixture, the best approach is to use specific mixture designs and analysis. But what is the main difference between them? In a factorial design for two factors, the variables can assume any combination of factor levels. The treatments can be represented using a square. Using the example of the cookie recipe, let's imagine we have tested the temperature between 180 and 220 degrees and the time between 15 and 30 minutes. We can test any combinations of these two factor levels. The combination can follow a standard factorial design, where the treatments correspond to the vertices of a square. We can add central points or even use a central composite design. And a factorial design for three factors can be represented in a cube and the treatments can assume any combination of factor levels in the surface or in the inside of the cube. On the other hand, mixture designs are different. For a mixture of two components, let's represent the fraction of component 1 in the horizontal axis and the fraction of component 2 in the vertical axis. In mixtures, the sum of the fractions of the components must be 1 or 100%, meaning they cannot vary independently. This way, the combination of x1 and x2 must obey the constraint x1 plus x2 equal 1 that corresponds to the diagonal of the square. We cannot have any combination outside this line. The same applies for mixture with three components. In the cookie recipe, let's make x1 the fraction of butter, x2 the fraction of flour, and x3 the fraction of sugar. The combination of the fractions x1, x2, and x3 must obey the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 1, which falls on the surface of a triangle inscribed in the cube. To summarize, in mixture designs, the factors are the components or ingredients of a mixture. This way, their levels are not independent. 
If x1, x2, x3 until xp denote the proportion of p components of a mixture, then each fraction xi must fall between 0 and 1, and the sum of the fraction of the components is 1, which corresponds to 100%. Mixture designs are widely used in the chemical, pharmaceutical, cosmetic, food and construction industries for the development of product formulations and blend. This course will use a variety of examples to cover the applications in these areas.